Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Anand Naidu sitting in for Riz Khan. When the former president of Harvard University suggested men are more suited to study and succeed in the sciences than their female counterparts, it started a firestorm and once again rekindled the debate on gender and aptitude. In the United States, figures show that girls seem to lose interest in math and science as they move from elementary school through high school. Today we speak to a young woman who has proved she is as proficient as any man in mathematics. She's also trying to make it cool for girls to be mathematically smart. Danica McKellar went from a brilliant career in acting as a child star to an equally brilliant career as a mathematician. You may remember her from the hit television series The Wonder Years when she played Winnie Cooper, Fred Savage's love interest. She's the author of Math doesn't suck how to survive middle school math without losing your mind or breaking a nail the book is targeted at young girls and aims to bring some glamour to the field of mathematics Danica joins me now from Los Angeles Danica thanks for your time well Hi, thank you for having me from Fred Savage's love interest to now a brilliant mathematician at what point did you realize that the world didn't revolve around Hollywood but revolve more around uh, I don't know decimals and fractions and equations <laughs> Well, when I got to college, um, my intention was to be a film major. That's why I went to UCLA, because they've got a great film school. And uh, while I was there, I kind of got the itch to take a math class. I felt like my brain was getting mushy. So I took a math class, and I was so nervous. I thought, college math has got to be so hard. So I studied all my high school notes. I super prepared for it, took the first midterm, and I was sure I failed. But it turned out I got the highest score on the midterm. And the teacher graphed the scores on the chalkboard, not with names, but just saying how many people got each one. And there was this one lone score up near the top. And a couple days later, someone tapped me on the shoulder and said, excuse me, aren't you that girl? And that question always ends with, from TV? And instead, he said, aren't you that girl who got the high score? And then I knew. I was, I was like, oh my god. I had a chance to make my world about something other than Hollywood, to redefine myself and to, uh, to be able to claim something as my own that had nothing to do with all that Hollywood glamour. Well, the girl from TV went on to study mathematics at uh, UCLA, and uh, you actually created a theorem while you were at UCLA. It's called the Chase McKellar Wynn Theorem, and that's not the full title. I'm not going to even try right. the full title. Let's leave that to you. What's the full title? <laughs> <laughs> The full title is Percolation and Gibbs Days Multiplicity for Ferromagnetic Ashkin Teller Models on Z2. All right, what language was that De in? Delightful <laughs> read. <laughs> right, the language of math. Uh, and what it's does that actually mean? an area of, well, it's complicated, but it's an area of um, uh, statistical mechanics where there's a, f a problem that comes up in physics. Uh, we attacked the mathematical part of it. We created a mathematical model of a magnetic material and solved a problem in that arena. Um, let's, we said, let's say that uh, this piece of magnetic material were two-dimensional, and let's say that it had intersection points, uh, like a lattice, and then we proved a theorem about that system dependent on temperature. And we got published. Yeah, Who I, knew? Yeah, I understand <laughs> it all now. Yeah, that's very clear. I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this, you know, when I listen to you there. Uh, I mean, is math relevant in the world today? Because that's a problem, isn't it? Taking something which many people see as very abstract and trying to... Uh, trying to make it more meaningful. Well, certainly the mathematics that I did in that paper does not, they don't come up every day at all. Um, but the, the math that I talk about in the book, middle school math, and then of course also some high school math, they do come into everyday life all the time. And that's one of the things that I want to show girls in the context of the book, is that not only is math a great brain exercise, or not only will it help you feel more confident, but it actually comes up all the time in life. And if you understand how to manipulate things like fractions and decimals and proportions, you can use them on a daily basis. Well, now like you're shopping is a perfect example. Well, I noticed, yeah, I was looking you know? at some of the chapters uh, in, yes, in your book. Yes, lots of shopping I mean. involved. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really great the way you've, uh, you've headlined some of this. I mean, chapter four, everything you wanted to know about pizza but were afraid to ask. How many iced lattes yes. can actors drink? How did that come about? <laughs> well, I realized that I, I, I knew that I was going to do a good job teaching the actual math, but how do you get kids interested in it? So I thought, well, every, every chapter can have sort of a theme. And uh, I want to make it fun and accessible, and so I tell a lot of stories. And every time I approached another topic to teach, I thought, OK, how, you know, what's the most interesting, fun, real life situation that I can tie this into? And then that's, that's what I title the chapter. And that's what I talk about in the chapter when I'm teaching. Right, I see some here. Choosing the perfect necklace. What's that about? Yes. 
Well, complex fractions, um, to me, are they look really scary, right? You've got this huge fraction with a bunch of stuff on top and a bunch of stuff on the bottom, like addition and subtraction and, and more fractions or decimals in there, percents, crazy things. They can be really intimidating. And the way I break it down is I say, look, let's say you're picking the perfect necklace for an outfit, but it's all tangled. You know, what are you going to do? Well, you have to untangle it because it's the perfect necklace after all. But what would you do? You start with the easy outside ones first and you slowly untangle it like that. You would never go right to the center one if it's a big mess because the outside ones will keep you from getting to it. So I teach how to unravel these complex fractions a step at a time in a way that makes it much easier. Well, you know, your book, uh, I mean, it talks about uh, a damaging social message that girls can't do math yes. well. But I mean, you're a living testimony that that's not true. Oh, there's, there's no reason for girls not to do well in math. It's all in our heads. I mean, girls in middle school, they've done a lot of studies that show that girls' confidence in their math ability drops way before their scores do. So they're doing just as well as boys in, for instance, the middle school years, in the early middle school years. But if you ask them how they're doing, they say they're not good at math. And it's this weird identify type, type issue. Girls don't identify with being able to do math. And why? Because in society, there's so many messages that tell girls, not only with people like Lawrence Summers telling girls that they can't do math, but also, or Barbie saying math is hard, but also there's messages that tell girls that the only thing that they're really valued for is their appearance. And I want to tell them that yes, appearance is fun and great to play with and fashion and glamour and all that stuff is great. Keep reading your teen magazines because why not? I did. It's fun. But being smart works with that. And the fabulous young woman that you want to be someday is dependent on you also being smart because that's going to lead you to make better choices and have more fun while you're being fabulous. Well, the book has stirred quite a bit of interest. I know you've been on all the networks here in the United States. You've been in the news magazines. Yes. You're now on Al Jazeera. How has the book been yes. received? What kind of reception have you been hearing? Oh, it's just exceeded my expectations. I'm so happy and so gratified. I get so many emails from girls talking about how they finally get fractions or they finally like math or like thank you for being, some of them flat out say thank you for being a role model, <laughs> which I think is really cute for some reason, coming from a 12 year old. Um, I get a lot, of, a lot of emails from teachers saying that I just started using the techniques in your book in the classroom and the students are responding, uh, especially the girls, they're, they're responding better parents thanking me for writing the book, saying that uh, this one guy said that his daughter has had her nose in the book ever since he brought it home, and those kinds of things, I, I get teary. I mean, I just, I just want to cry. I'm so happy. Well, let me ask you about role models in general. Do you think that's very important, generally, in education? Oh, yes. Uh, that's what little kids do. They look around them to see who they're supposed to be and who they're going to be, and it creates an expectation. And expectations are so powerful. You know, when little girls when little girls are cute, right, cute little girls especially, and cute little, I mean, they get it the worst. People compliment them on their appearance and little else. And they, you know, they, oh, you're so cute, you're so beautiful, and that's what they hear, and that's all they hear. You grow up, and you think that's what you're supposed to be. They don't, they're not expected to do well in math and science. From a young age, they're told that, because we all have these stereotypes in our minds. And that creates little girls who think that they're supposed to just be beautiful, and they don't have to work on anything else. And they become obsessed with their, self, their body image and anything they can do to look more attractive. They don't realize that the most important part of being fabulous is your brain, and that will dictate everything else. Well, you also have the math horoscope in the book. Uh, you know, I was wondering if you could explain yeah. that to us. Well, I can tell you, now I was reading that. I'm a Virgo. I was reading the horoscope for Virgos. It says math oh, yeah. should come naturally. <laughs> for little girls. <laughs> it, it should come naturally to me, right? Uh, well, wrong. I mean, I still don't know what a quadratic equation is. Well, I don't, you know, you're not a little girl who is well, maybe, still yeah, that's uh, moldable at that age. Yeah. It's, it's, for, it's for little middle school girls. It's not for everyone who's a Virgo. I, the Virgos, I mean, according to the astrologer at least, tend to be more analytical, but the horoscope is in there not necessarily to be taken seriously, but to be fun. You know, in teen magazines, if you look in a teen magazine, what do they have? Personality quizzes, horoscopes, uh, testimonials, things like that. And that's what I wanted to include in the book, to make it feel friendly and accessible. Because if, if girls have an association with this book of, oh, this is kind of fun stuff, then the math is going to be more inviting as well. Well, let's just turn away from mathematics uh, for a moment here and talk about uh, what you're doing right now. What, how do you spend your days now? Well, these days I'm doing things like this, <laughs> a lot of it, which is very exciting and I love it. Uh, talking about the book um, on news shows and in interviews on the phone, newspapers, magazines, uh, 
radio, you name it, it's been great. Um, next week I shoot an episode of a TV show called How I Met Your Mother. It's on CBS, really fun show. I, I did one episode for them a few years ago and now I'm doing another one. And uh, I got back from Hawaii last month shooting a TV movie there for the Sci-Fi Channel. So I'm still acting, but this book is, is really what I'm doing right now. That's, that's my focus. I leave my book tour next in two weeks and uh, I get to go around the country and go to book signings. My first time, this is my first book, it's all a new adventure. But, uh, but that's, that's how I'm spending my time, to answer your question. Yeah, but throughout all these years, you've also been acting at the same time. I know you've been in several episodes yes. of The West Wing. Uh, you were on a series yes. which is being shown on the Lifetime channel as well. Yes, Inspector Mom. That was last year. Actually, I did that while I was writing the book. <laughs> I would go, literally have my laptop on set in between takes at one point when the deadlines were getting near and uh, writing chapters and coming up with ideas on the spot. I mean, Actually, about one of the testimonials. Hmm? Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, well, in the, in the book I have these testimonials about, uh, that, that feature young girls, or girls who were young, afraid of math, and now are successful in math, and use math every day in their careers, and they're beautiful and fabulous and successful and all the rest of it. And one of them I met while I was on set, typing on my laptop. She is an actress who is also a petroleum analyst and uses math every day in her job, um, uh, Stephanie Peterson. And so she's in the book, and so there I was typing on the book. We started talking about it. She ended up being in the book. So <laughs> while I was doing Inspector Mom, there was lots of uh, math writing going on. Well, I also see that while you've been acting and writing the book, you've also produced a DVD on yoga. Uh, is that important yes. in your life, yoga and meditation? Yes. I, uh, I tend to be a bit of a workaholic, as you could probably imagine. And uh, for me, it's really, really important to take small breaks and let my body and my mind reset. And I found yoga and meditation to be the best tool by far, just stretching out the body and centering your mind. And to me, it's like hitting restart on the computer. If I can just stop in the middle of my busy day and for 20 minutes, or even 10 minutes, some of the segments on the DVD are 10 minutes, some are 20 minutes, and just do some of that and go into your bliss for just a few minutes and then come back out, I'm more productive, I'm more awake, I'm more alert, and everything works better. You know, you were a superstar as a child actress and you were a superstar as an adult actress. Was that a difficult transition from child to adult? In, in that profession? Well, I found my, trans my transition happened to UCLA through mathematics. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, you know, I took a break from it, so that was my transition. And then after I got my degree in mathematics and had this sort of renewed sense of self-confidence, then I was able to go back into Hollywood knowing that it was my choice and I wanted to. But I had this other thing behind me. Um, I had this sort of like secret card that said, yeah, but I was a math major, so people didn't have to look down on me, and they didn't look down on me. It's like, oh, child actor. They had this instant respect, and I, I'm so grateful to that. I never even thought about that when I was getting a, a degree in mathematics. I didn't think, oh, well, this is going to help me stand out from the crowd of other actresses. People are going to actually have a lot of respect for me after being a child actor, but that's what happened. Well, as you point out, the book's been very successful. You've had a great response. Have you ever thought of teaching as possibly one of your careers? I don't know if I, if I would have time to do that. Um, I love teaching, though, just in general, either through the book or any time a friend has a, a kid who has trouble in math, I always volunteer to help. And, and I love it. I love it. I mean, that's part of why I loved writing the book so much and how I was able to, because writing a book is a huge job. And you know they wanted me to have a ghostwriter, and I refused because I'm stubborn like that. And I just worked so many hours and days and months and uh, for a year and a half on this book. And what kept me going is my love of of conveying this information and and just pretending that there was a little girl sitting next to me who was going, "Oh, I get it," and that just kept me going. So, well, the book is called Math Doesn't Suck: How to Survive uh, Middle School Math. It's primarily for girls, as you said, but I presume boys can come along for the ride as well. Oh, sure, absolutely. I mean, you know, most, most textbooks are geared towards boys. The examples have to deal with a lot of sports and baseball averages and things. And in my book, I just have examples that are centered around girly, thi girly things, because why not? So if girls have been doing it this whole time, I think boys could probably get a lot out of it, too. And it's very friendly. The math is very friendly. Like, the pizza chapter isn't necessarily girly or for boys. It's cheap pizza. I mean, <laughs> yeah, everybody right. likes pizza. So, yeah. And also, I want to mention that um, mathdoesn'tsuck.com is the website. Uh, and there's answers in the back of the book to all the questions, but I do fully worked out solutions to every single problem in the book, and I posted it online. The publisher said it was too much to put all in one book, so I put, I put those online. Danica McKellar, thank you very much for joining us, and good luck with that, with that book and your acting career as well. Thank you so much.
And thank you for being with us. On the next show, we take a look at the effects of Hurricane Katrina with a community activist who's critical of the efforts over the past two years to rebuild the city of New Orleans. Don't forget, if you have any thoughts about pressing issues around the world, send us your emails. Send them to riz at aljazeera.net. Street Talk is next.